Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry. From the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna, and today I am here with Louise Parker. How are you doing? Hey, Donna. I'm really good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I know we haven't been here for a while. We were talking earlier that uh, the last time was your release of your song, and that was quite a while ago. Yeah, we said about 18 months ago. Just like a lifetime. Doesn't it feel like that? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So we always like to start off the interviews here with the hardest question of all. Oh, no. Who is Louise Parker? Who? <laughs> oh my God, that's such a deep question. That <laughs> is a really hard question. Um, who is Louise Parker? I guess Louise Parker, the musician, because I have many, many layers, um, like an onion or like Shrek, if you will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Louise Parker, the musician, is this really passionate and driven singer-songwriter Um, I started writing when I was 12 years old and taught myself the guitar when I was 16 and just put my nose to the grind and just carried on with it. Just played every gig that came my way, every open mic night, moved to Nashville, moved to Texas, moved back again (laughs) (laughs) and just as just not stopped. I'm very stubborn. Louise Park, the musician, is very stubborn. (laughs) Oh, I like that you don't give up. I, you know, that's great. You know, it's one of my best traits, but also one of my worst traits being so <laughs> stubborn, I think. Like, as you said, I haven't given up and it's probably one of my proudest achievements in my life is my music career and the fact that I've not given up. But it also, um, it you know, does mean that I butt heads with a few people when, when I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. We all get passionate and we fight for what we believe in. That's, that's exactly. what it comes down to. I love that. I'm going to use that argument from now on. (laughs) You can use it all you want. Yes. Oh, so we know that um, you have a new video coming out. You want to tell us about this new video coming out in March? I do. I'd love to. So um, as kind of an incentive to reach 1000 subscribers on YouTube, I kind of teased that I'd have a new music video coming out. And then I was um, really excited that I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube the other day. And so I'm super excited to announce that the music video for I've Forgotten How to Smile, which is my single that hit number one in the iTunes country charts last year, is going to be coming out in March. Oh, I can't wait. I've I've dropped a few photos here and there and kind of like little teasers of what it's about. I don't know if anyone's picked up on them yet, but I'm excited. Oh, well, we're excited too. We always love when the new videos come out, new songs come out. Yeah. I think- Creatives. It's a whole kind of other side to a song. It, it shows you things that you might not have thought of. Mm-hmm. And I love a little Easter egg. I do love an Easter egg in a music video. <laughs> and so it's kind of continuing in, on from one of my last music videos. It's almost telling a story from kind of where I was to where I am now. And it just brings so much more emotion to it as well. Like it's a really emotional song. And then you see it, a visual sometimes makes it even more so like I find it easier to connect sometimes to songs when there's a music video absolutely absolutely because you know sometimes lyrics are so predetermined to what you're thinking about like you know when they're very not not a clear picture or painting that clear picture but the more on the emotional side you don't totally get that okay well I'm feeling this way someone else is feeling this way close to but how's the artist conveying it and that it just brings that whole synergy to it yeah yeah I think especially this song as I said, it is an incredibly emotional song. When I wrote it, I was kind of spiraling into this really dark place. And I think you can see that in the music video is kind of almost how crazy I was going when I was writing this song. Oh, we all go through those patches though. So it's always good. Yes. Yes. Healthy, Mm -hmm. healthy when you come out the other side. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So Tell us, who are some of the women that have inspired you to do music? Now, obviously, you spent some time in Nashville and Texas. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear like all spectrums, because obviously for our defense, not knowing this, you are in the UK currently. I am, yes. So, yes. Yeah, let me think. I think one of my biggest kind of inspirations to pick up and learn the guitar 
was Taylor Swift, definitely from a young age, and Katy Perry. Now, I've always cited those two as the people that I, that made me want to pick up a guitar. These badass women, you know, That's- singing on stage just by themselves. Um, in particular, there's this one music video from the VMA Awards. Um, I think it's like 2009 or something, you know, like ages ago. And it's Katy Perry singing Thinking of You. It's just her on stage with her guitar in the most amazing dress I've ever seen. And I thought, that's it. Like, I'm going to learn how to play guitar. And I did. Um, <laughs> and then kind of when I started to foray into country music a little bit, it was Shania Twain, someone that has always been there. Like her music's always been played like around my house and obviously on the radio. She's phenomenal. She's got incredible songs, but it wasn't really until I started writing and, and performing country music that I listened to more of her back catalog and really fell in love with her. I adore Shania Twain. Like I can't even, it's not like I can't express or even put like an amount on how much I love Shania Twain. And I guess the more I've kind of grown into country you know, Marin Morris and Miranda Lambert, Casey Musgraves, you know, Kelsey Ballerini. These are the people that I kind of discovered when I was living in Nashville and you hear their songs everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, I think they're, they're kind of like my biggest inspirations at the moment. Wonderful. And I like how you say it about Shania and going to the back, her back catalog, because, you know, I remember when she first came out, the very first, I was like, what made you say that I think was the first big release on CMT? the first video is either that one or um i can't think of the other song but it was from the <laughs> very first her very first cd out her very first That'd album like any man of mine no that was the second oh, was that a second, second oh. yeah so so anyway <laughs> so when you think about- <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we don't have all our uh, google docs here so check everything to make sure we're speaking correctly on the first and second right but no, it was it was just funny because I that immediately comes to my mind because I remember seeing those videos and the scandals about the midriff shirts. And it wasn't just her, it was a lot yeah. of the women at that time in the 90s. They're doing the midriffs. And that's it's like, you know, who cares? I'm like, yeah. Absolute icon. Yeah. I love it. Wonderful. So we also know from our earlier conversation, you have a new song coming out later in 2022, Tequila Sunset. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited about this one. As I was saying to you earlier, I've been sitting on it for two years because it's just not been ready to release or the right time. Or, you know, the, the first the first time around, I just released Lie to Me. And I was like, it just doesn't feel like the right time to now release like this summer banger, which is really yeah. upbeat and happy after I've just released this really depressing song. Um, and then again, last year, I, I just wasn't emotionally or mentally in the right place to release it. And so this year I'm so excited about releasing. I just can't wait to get it out of there. And um, two days ago, I started a Kickstarter, kind of like a crowdfunding platform to fund the music video for it. So this will be another music video I've got coming out this year. And we're already something like 80% of the way funded in two days, which is <laughs> That's crazy. I've just got the best fans in the world honestly like I wasn't expecting it I was almost kind of like oh I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not so I'll just put it out there and I'll kind of see what happens so in two days to reach 80% already is just absolutely phenomenal I'm completely blown away um but yeah so that will be out in June time wonderful we look forward to that we'll have to have you back on to promote that yes I'd love that oh well, that'd be so much fun Absolutely. <laughs> so would you like to get started on the 20 crazy questions yes i'm prepared okay. i'm ready okay i'm pretty sure there's no correct answer to any of these but you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the last thing you read oh my goodness there's oh <laughs> i'm trying to remember the title of it my friends got me a book for my birthday. It's something like The Boy, the Fox, and the Horse or something like that. The Boy, the Horse, and the... Oh, anyway, it's got these um, illustrations. The, th- the book is mostly illustrations. It doesn't have a lot of writing in it, but it's all like these little stories that kind of have a really big meaning to them. I'm going to have to look. I'm gonna have to, it's in my bedroom. I'm going to have to look at it when I get back. But yeah, that's what I kind of read last. Perfect. Oh, so hypothetically, if I came to you and said, I need to hide a dead body. Oh, do you know a good place? I'd find one. Yeah. I mean, 
I think I live quite close to the seaside. So we could do something with that, you know? Perfect. I like it. (laughs) Oh, what's the best concert you've ever been to? So I've got two. Okay. Shania Twain, obviously, Uh, was going to be up there. Um, But another phenomenal artist I've seen is Stevie Wonder, who was just absolutely like, as you can imagine, the crowd were just super chill as well. Like everyone was kind of sitting down, just having in the song. Obviously, you don't realize how many good songs he's got. A bit like Shania Twain, you don't realize how many songs are hers <laughs> as such. And so again, that was just a really great, really great concert. Wonderful. They sound like awesome concerts. Oh, they were great. What's the first thing you would do if you won the lottery? <laughs> I think about this all the time. Um, <laughs> I would probably take like a work sabbatical and just get into this recording studio and just record everything that I want to, because I've got such a back catalog of songs. (laughs) I'm currently in the recording process of what I was writing about two, three years ago because I can't keep up. I write so much. And so I'd love to just be able to get into the studio and just record everything, just have the time and the money to, um, and I mean, depending on how big the, the lottery was, I would like to eventually move out of my parents' house. But music <laughs> comes first, obviously. <laughs> oh. You know, if I could go back to the age where I could just stay at my parents' house for a while longer, I may have taken advantage of that. I, I am so lucky. I know how fortunate I am to have parents that are so supportive, yeah. but at the same time, there's nothing like your own space sometimes, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us something that's on your bucket list. Oh, there's a lot of places I want to travel. I'd love to do a world tour. Honestly, I just want to get out there. Australia is up there in New Zealand and Canada, right at the top. (laughs) So yeah, world tour is definitely up there. I can't wait for the world tour. Oh, well, yeah, me neither. I'm going to tick it off one day, I promise. (laughs) Figure some time again. Yes. I know. Hey, buddy. Say hi. Okay. <laughs> She's like, whatever. I'm like, where'd you come from? She's like all over the place today again. And that's why Tigger, she bounces all over. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. A name well suited. Yes. Yes. The first time we brought her home, it was hysterical. She like ran and bounced on the back of this couch. I don't even know how she did. It was like, but she didn't dig her claws in. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, so I was ready to yell, no claws in the couch. Yeah. You know? Yes. Start, start <laughs> as we mean to go on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so tell us, what job would you be terrible at? Oh, that's a really, oh, you know, I just, that's a tough question. But actually, I don't know if I'd be a very good teacher. But hear me out. There is a reason why. <laughs> I have got zero patience. Like, I am the most impatient person I know. I want everything done yesterday. Um and so I have a feeling that if I was a teacher, especially to younger children, I just don't think I'd be very patient with them. And you have to be, don't you? So I think I'd be a bad teacher. <laughs> Although this is a really random tangent, but I went to see a medium last year, my first ever kind of reading. And she said to me, one of the things she said to me was like, I can see you teaching. And I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> She was like, no, I want you to go into teaching. And I was like, no. (laughs) Maybe it was something on music. Maybe it was teaching guitar. (laughs) Even then, I think I'd be terrible. I've just got zero patience. Did you ever watch Friends? You know, Phoebe and Friends when she's trying to teach guitar. Like, (laughs) that would be me. I'd be like, I'm like, my monster claw. Like, you know, (laughs) that that would be, I'm just so bad with, it's just my patience, honestly. And I'm 28 and I know I'm only going to get worse as I get older. They say you actually, no, I actually can be the opposite because I know some oh. people that as they've aged, they've chilled out more. They're like, yeah, it's okay. It's all good now. They'll have fingers, fingers crossed for that then, because I don't think I could get any less patient than I am now. <laughs> oh, so what's your game plan for zombie apocalypse? Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I do very well in a zombie apocalypse, but here are the reasons why. I'm asthmatic for starters. So I just suck at breathing. What a thing to suck at. Um, I'm short-sighted. 
So I'm quite blind. So without contact lenses or glasses, which let's be honest, I'm not going to be able to get hold of contact lenses in the zombie apocalypse. And my glasses would probably break or something. Um, I can't see very far away. (laughs) So no one's going to be asking me to be on their team is what I'm saying here, Donna. (laughs) I think my my best my you can best be on my team. Like, oh thank you I'll join your team yeah but I think I, honestly the, the best thing I can do is hide <laughs> oh I'm not a badass oh. at all oh so good oh, what <laughs> what artist and album should we listen to before we die oh I got suggested an amazing album the other day by Morgan Wade I don't know if you've heard of her And for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called, but her most recent album, Morgan Wade's most recent album, her songwriting is phenomenal. And just the whole production around it. Ah, it's just, I just, it's one of those albums I listened to and the person that suggested it to me, I then messaged them back and I was like, right, this is going to be my next album. This is what I want to sound like. It's just phenomenal. Um, But if I was going to throw it back a little bit, it'd probably be Shania Twain's, um, oh my goodness. One of, well, I think it's like her, the one that's, you know, got any man of mine on it, her second album. The name escapes me right now. Not very good with names. <laughs> I think that might have been the Woman in Me album. Yes, that album? that's it. The Woman in Me. So yes. yeah, it came to me. Well done. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Dixie Chicks. Just everything they've ever released. Or the, the Chicks, sorry. Um, everything they've ever released. Just listen, all of it's good, let's be honest. <laughs> yes. Those are all yeah. great things, artists, albums to listen to in general. Yes. Yes. I can agree more. Who would play you in the movie about your life? I would love to be played by, I'm going to pronounce her surname wrong. I think it's Juliana Howe. Juliana Huff. Juliana Huff. Huff. Yes. Is it Huff? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to pronounce her surname wrong. I would love it if she could play me. Because she played Sherry in Rock of Ages. Now, Rock of Ages is like my all-time favourite musical and would be on my bucket list to perform on the West End would to be Sherry. And so I just like her to play me for that reason only. (laughs) I know that's terrible, but... No, not at all. Not at all. That's awesome. So, where's Waldo? Well... Um, if I, I, if I knew I'd tell you, but I'm still trying to find it myself. <laughs> I'm so lost, you know, not even Waldo, any men in particular, don't ask where they are. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Sorry, Waldo is still lost today. <laughs> yes. Let me know if you find him, please. Oh, I will. I will. I will get back to you if I do. Thank you. Oh, would you rather cook or order in? I can't choose both. I'd say cook. I really enjoy cooking, actually. That's not to say I'm good at it. I'm not, I'm not a good cook. But um, I think there's something about it. I think it's because I come from a family that cooks all the time. Like we very rarely order in. I think there's something really special about that. It's fam- that is what I kind of link to family time, sitting around the dinner table together, eating something homemade. So I think that's probably why I'd cook. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you sing in the shower? Oh, no, not very often. <laughs> and you know, what? I had this conversation with someone. This is like a couple of months back now. And they, they'd, said, they'd said to me, oh, you don't sing in the shower. And I was like, no. And they were like, well, you know, why, why don't you? And I was like, well, what do you do for a job? And he was like, I'm an electrician. And I was like, well, do you do that in the shower? And he was like, <laughs> no. And I was like, well, there we go. Because you're basically asking me why I don't do my job in the shower. Like, I just felt like... It, I write songs in the shower. So sometimes I'll sing if I'm writing a song because I find showering is like really, I like wake your mind up in a weird way. Yes. Sometimes I'll sing if I'm writing a song in the shower, but very rarely do I sing. And a lot of people think it's really weird. No, I don't. I'm like, it's just, it's interesting because people are like, yes. yes, I do. There are really good acoustics in there. And I'm like, okay, like whatever makes you happy. Like that's, that's just, I mean, I'll go into the bathroom to record stuff but not necessarily be in the shower, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh. Do you prefer boots or heels? Boots. Mm. Straight up boots. 
my heel days are done. <laughs> oh. What's the best thing since sliced bread? Oh. Can I say Shania Twain? <laughs> Absolutely. She is. The, I just love Shania Twain. <laughs> Do you have any guilty pleasure music? And if so, what is it? So before kind of country pop, I was really into emo kind of um, uh, pop punk. And I used to have bright pink hair with a big sweepy fringe. And I'd stretched my my ear to six millimeters. And <laughs> I really wanted my <laughs> lip pierced at the time as well. Um, and that is like my guilty, like going back and listening to Paramore and like You, Me at Six yeah. and Dashboard Confessional and all this and Avril Lavigne. I've been having a real Avril Lavigne kick recently, listening to all of her old stuff. I even did a little cover of um, one of her songs on my social medias. Just love it. <laughs> Good music. It is. <laughs> What's the worst pizza topping? Wow. <laughs> if we're talking like conventional toppings, it would have to be pineapple. I don't care who you are. It's wrong. All right. But if we're talking like unconventional, because there's a lot of things that you could put on the pizza that I disagree with, it'd be something like mint. I don't understand mint as a food. Like mint sauce, fine. But apart from that, I'm like, why would you put mint in chocolate? Like chocolate's one of the best things ever created. And I'm like, why have you put mint in it? Because to me, I'm like, that's why I used to brush my teeth. So I'd say unconventionally mint on pizza. <laughs> Those are great answers. I didn't even thought about <laughs> mint on pizza at all. Like I, <laughs> well, that's because it's wrong, Donna. It's yeah. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you could be any person or any position, like a CEO Ooh. or accountant or lawyer or whatever, who would you want to be and why? Oh man, I don't know who I'd pick. To be completely honest with you, um, I'd love to be in the mind of like a music business executive just for, just for a day because I think it'd be absolutely chaos. Um, I haven't got a name for you, but just any of them, yeah. just to know exactly what they're thinking when it comes to choosing music, what they're looking for, because it's, it's such a guessing game and it's so opinionated and I think that's where like a lot of independent music artists struggle because there is no rule book. And I've always said, if there was a rule book, I would follow it to the T and I would ace it. <laughs> it's so unfair. Absolutely. So are you good at keeping secrets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah not my own. I'm terrible <laughs> with my own secrets, but everyone else's I'm really good at keeping. Oh, Why have you got one for me? No, not right now. <sighs> okay. Later, later. <laughs> later. So I come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, at what age did you become an adult? I'm still waiting. <laughs> at 28, I'm still waiting <laughs> to be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't grow up. Trust me. Don't grow no, up. No, no. Grow up. Yeah. I'm trying not to <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh. If you could win an Olympic medal for any sport, real or fake, what would it be? Wow. Um, you know, what? I'd love to be really good at ice skating like figure skating I used to do figure skating when I was growing up and I did I did compete but I was never really that good and it's the one thing that I've always been like oh actually I just really wish I was it's like the little dresses you know <laughs> and the dances I just think it's a real skill I would agree I think that's definitely a skill yeah I've, I've never been on ice skate so yeah to me that's yeah <laughs> you've got to give it a go at least once I mean it's absolutely terrifying but <laughs> I think I will not? I I, I had someone that offered to, uh, you know, give me like skate lessons, if you will. So I'm going to have to get to Canada and do that. Yes, so, uh, do it. I'll come. I'll come with. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to film it all then, too. Because yeah, on, sure. on my world tour, on my world tour, when I stop yeah. off in Canada, we'll go skating. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> and then we'll come down to Florida here and just enjoy the beach because, you know, yeah. Yeah. Got Although great beaches. This week we did have that, uh, we had the, the negative degrees this week. So I was like overnight, two nights in a row and we're, I'm down the Southwest. I'm like, oh, we got a cold snap. This was exciting. And then the rest <laughs> of this week, like later this week, it'll be up to like 80 degrees again. I'm like, oh, oh so okay. This just, it's hot. As a British person, I confirm that it's very hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what else do you have coming up 
for the rest of 2022. Some tours, some, you know, yeah. big events. Oh God, there's loads of stuff going on. I'm super excited for this year. I've got my debut headline show in Manchester. So it's the first time I've ever headlined a show up there. So I'm super excited. I've then got another headline show in London in May. Um, That's got a little surprise attached to it, but I can't tell anyone yet, but I'm super excited. I've got so many gigs. I'm playing in places that I have either not played in many, many years or have never played before. And I'm so excited about it. Um, music releases. So I've got a few more music releases in the works as well. And just getting out there as much as possible and doing as much kind of radio and just fun, fun things like this. Cause I just, you just, just love it. When I do, I just love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought it's good to come on and just meet new people and talk and yeah. Even if it's just for a chat or is it like these questions are great. I'm, I just love these questions. <laughs> Well, we love the crazy get to know you stuff. So, you know. Yeah. You, you find out who you want to be with it at a, during the uh, the zombie apocalypse or, you know, other things. Or if you ever have to kill someone who you can't yeah. trust, you know, you learn this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you ever put mint on pizza, you know, we can no longer be friends. Right. Right. I got that. Although the maybe chocolate, excuse chocolate the pineapple. Mint, the chocolate mint. I think we could. Uh, I, I do like the chocolate mints. Those little like mint chocolates. I, you know, what, like, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, because it's like the after dinner thing. It's like that little, like, you know, fresh Uh, breath after dinner. What makes it even worse is that it's dark (laughs) chocolate. It's dark chocolate, and that's even worse. No, not all dark chocolate. Some of them has milk chocolate. Okay, well, that's I can can kind of excuse that then. I just don't get mint in, like, food items. As as I said, unless it's, like, mint sauce. Right. I just just don't understand, like, mint flavoured. You've already got something that's really, really good. Then you just, why did you? Oh, why did you tamper with it? Like, oh. <laughs> you can see this is a real sore spot for me. This is my stubbornness comes out, all right? <laughs> see, I'm that way with chocolate, or- like the orange chocolate stuff. I'm like, who puts, who does that to a, a chocolate? Why do you ruin a chocolate with orange? See, like, I don't mind, I don't mind that so much, but, but <laughs> if I had a choice, just give me milk chocolate. Mm, good point. You know? <laughs> good point. Yep. Or peanut butter cups, maybe? Not a big fan. Not mm. a big fan of only when I lived over there. And I think it's kind of like your taste buds, what you grew up, what you're used to. Mm. Chocolate in America is nothing like chocolate in England. And right. I'm not sure what it is, but I just can't get on with American chocolate. It's probably the uh, corn syrup they put in it. Yeah. That's probably it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even because I think Hershey's do a variation of dairy milk which is what we have over here is the dairy milk. And I saw it, I think it was like an English section of the store and I was so excited. I think I bought a couple of bars. So I was like, it's, it's dairy milk. Yeah. And it was only when I got home and I tried it because it's Hershey's dairy milk. It doesn't taste anything like our dairy milk. I was so right. frustrated. <laughs> it was all right, but it yeah. still wasn't as good as British dairy milk. Yeah. What can and you it, do? It's true. It's a, and it's amazing because you can tell the difference. I mean, that's the first thing. Like you have to go to like especially or Whole Foods stores or different stores to find that the better chocolates or to a yeah. chocolatier store or something like that. And yeah. Very disappointing. Missing my home comforts when I was living there. <laughs> oh well. Oh dear. It has been a pleasure ever having you on today and you are welcome back anytime you know that. And let's not oh. wait the 18 months again. Let's try to do it a lot earlier. Maybe like yeah. you know, six, five, six yeah. months. Yeah. I'm all right with that. I can always make time for you guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. We always love having you on. Thank you so much. Oh, it's our pleasure. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of Crazy Women Country. Have a great day, everyone. See you later. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.